hypermasculinity's restrictive definitions of what a man is and and what they should be leads to more anger, silence, and violence. These rules inhibit a person from realizing who they truly are, what they love, and the ability to show that love. The idea that men have to adhere to these roles and that the fact that they are in charge ignores their humanity and their emotions. It puts them to act as if they were beyond human, like a god. And, and it's the cool Greek gods, okay, with the abs and the lightning bolts, not, not those pansy Hindu gods that read and talk about education and love. And being God is, is exhausting. I mean, it's slightly less exhausting than being in competition with your own ego, but God is tired. Okay, that's why God is always talking to people to do their bidding. You know, they don't want to keep magicking things for us. They want us to be able to take care of each other so the Lord can retire in some faraway Fibonacci sequence. And hypermasculinity is perpetuated by hyperfemininity, which falls into the same category of restrictive rules. There are women that want the hypermasculine guys. They, they still want to be taken care of and be seen as these fragile bringers of life that need to be protected. And these men are going to do that. They are more keen on physical prowess rather than intellect and problem-solving skills, empathy, and emotional balance. And part of the discussion and limitations of these restrictive rules is the physical versus the brain. There's a major pushback to intellect, and I do plan on talking about anti-intellectualism uh, in the future uh, at full length and more in depth, but the value of physical power versus the mental is an age-old argument. Hypermasculinity doesn't care about working smarter as long as you work harder and there's still a purpose for you within these old rules and stereotypes. But it's hard to get hypermasculine dudes to see the negative effects of stoicism and aggression, competition, and devaluing other people to try add value to yourself without knowing yourself. The frozen ocean of the ego breaks, and that water is a shock to the system that can lead to just more aggression. They punch that water, and that doesn't really do anything. You have to ease the transition. It's like going into a pool, one foot at a time, and eventually you'll be able to go all the way underwater, look up, and get a new perspective.